strength and aid, yet they are soon gone and fly away. Teach us to number our days that we may have a heart of wisdom. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad, dear Lord, for all the days that you have afflicted us. And let your work be shown to your servants, your glorious power to their children. And let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. We gather this day to remember and to give thanks for Judy, for her life and for her faith. Uh, we begin with the responsive reading. It's uh, printed in your worship folder. Words that remind us of Easter, words that remind us uh, that Judy was claimed by our God in the waters of baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Judith Irene Volkman Penrose was born on December 12, 1943 in Marshall, Minnesota, the daughter of Donald and Verna Bauer Volkman. She was baptized at Salem Lutheran Church in Pipestone on April 9, 1944. She made confirmation of her faith on May 15, 1958 at the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Ruthton, Minnesota. Judy and her family moved to Alexandria where she graduated from high school in 1961. She was united in marriage to David Penrose just one minute after midnight on January 1st, 1979 at First Lutheran here in Parkers. The couple made their home in Parkers Prairie where they raised their four children, Dawn, Todd, Aaron, and Ryan. Judy helped David with their many different businesses throughout the years. She also worked as an EMT in Parkers for 10 years. Judy kept herself busy. She was on a bowling league for 30 years, played softball as second baseman for many years. And with the help of some soap and a little ice, she pierced uh, numerous ears for local young women here in town. She was tough to beat at cribbage, at 31, and at Scrabble. She also liked to do Sudoku, crossword puzzles, word searches. She enjoyed hunting, um, shooting bucks only. And she donated over 15 gallons of blood to the Red Cross. Family was the most important part of her life. With her lovely smile, she hosted every holiday at her home. She made sure everyone had lots of fun, along with plenty of food and drinks. She loved everyone and will be dearly missed by all who knew and loved her. Judith I. Penrose went to be with God in heaven last Sunday, November 8th, 2020 from Alamere Health in Alexandria at the age of 76. 
She's survived by her loving husband of 41 years, David of Parker's, her children, Dawn and Brian Rubner, Todd and Susan Severson, Aaron Penrose and Scott, Ryan and Chelsea Penrose. By 10 grandchildren, Molly, Jason, Ryan, Darian, Tristan, Hunter, James, Carolyn, Alicia, and Isabella. And by one great grandchild, Riker. By her brother, Oren and Linda Volkman, and sister, Raleigh and Tom. Also by many nieces and nephews. Judy was preceded in death by her parents and her sister, Donna Gray. Honorary urn bearers are all of her grandchildren. Blessed be the memory of Judith Irene Penrose. Let us pray. O oh God of all grace and mercy, we give you thanks for your loving kindness shown to Judy. We thank you that you called her to faith in the waters of baptism, that you nurtured, nurtured that faith through your word and sacrament. We thank you now that you have called her home to a heavenly rest, to an eternal life with you. We thank you for the loving kindness you've shown to her and to all your servants who have finished their course in faith, who now rest from their labors. Grant, O Lord, that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading uh, for this day from Isaiah chapter 25. Isaiah compares uh, heaven with a, a great feast, a great banquet. He says, On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine of rich food, full of marrow, of aged wine, well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. St. Paul says that as Christians, yes, we grieve, but our grief is different from those who do not believe. It is different from those who have no hope. St. Paul writes to us, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. 
the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise for the Holy Gospel. We hear these words of Jesus in John chapter 14. He says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. But Thomas said unto him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together uh, to confess uh, the faith into which Judy was baptized, the faith that she made confirmation of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May be seated. We join in our sermon hymn, How Great Thou Art, to him that praises God for his great world, his great creation, and most of all, uh, for the gift of the cross and the gift of heaven. How great thou art.
dear Dave, and Dawn, and Todd, and Aaron, and Ryan, spouses, grandchildren, siblings, family, and friends of Judy Penrose. Grace and mercy and peace be to each of you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Judy's confirmation verse uh, will serve as our text for today. It's from Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, these two verses. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. So far, our text. We gather today to mourn because we need each other, because we hurt, because there's a loss and an emptiness, and, and though we wish we could turn back the clock, we can't. And so, indeed, we gather to mourn, and that's what St. Paul says. We, we do mourn. But we also gather to rejoice. We rejoice in Judy, and we rejoice for Judy. We rejoice for her faith. We rejoice in the gifts that God gave her, and we rejoice in the gift of heaven. And we gather today because... God has something to say. We gather here because God speaks uh, that which is true. Words that, that we need to hear. We mourn because of love. If you didn't love someone, you wouldn't be sad. You wouldn't mourn. But when you have loved and when you have loved deeply, the hurt is there, the, the separation, the loss. I didn't actually count all the roses on the uh, bouquet there, but I'm told there's 41 for 41 years of marriage. The red ones for Dave and his love and his loved ones. The orange for the kids. The pink ones for the grandkids. Yellow one for the first great grandson hummingbirds there too you see them two together Dave and Judy others as well surrounding surrounding the ashes surrounding the urn we gather to comfort one another to be together to remember, to reflect. We gather to rejoice because the goodbye that we say today is not forever. The good news is this is not a separation that never ends. But thanks to the gift of faith, uh, there is a reunion. Years fly fast, right? The older you are, the faster they fly. And it just tells us it isn't going to be that long until there's a reunion. A time when we're together again. That's the promise that God gives for all who hold to the faith, to all who trust in Jesus. And we also rejoice today because, because Judy enjoys the, the sweet air of heaven. No more issues of, of breathing or being confined or, or worried about health. Um, there is no sickness in heaven. Instead, on the last day, we receive glorified bodies that live and function perfectly. So we rejoice 
in that gift for Judy. We hear the words of our God. Her confirmation pastor chose these words for her many years ago. And these words shall be on your heart. These words shall fill your heart. These words shall speak to you, to your mind, to your heart. They are God's words. These words that I command to you today. Moses spoke those words, first of all, to the children of Israel as they were about to enter into the promised land. And Moses knew he wasn't going to go with them. He was going to be separated from them. He was going to die. But he said, let these words be with you in your heart. He knew it was important. God's people were going to the promised land. And these words would go with them. Judy has gone to the promised land, and these words are for us. These words are to be with us. The Gospel from St. John reminds us Jesus' promise. In my Father's house there are many rooms. In biblical days, People lived in tents, and they would move from, from pasture to pasture, grazing place to grazing place, and, and the house had to be portable. And so you had sticks, and you had walls and, and coverings, and, and, uh, and it was portable, and it was expandable, because if, if someone got married, um, they would join the compound. They'd add on another room or two for the new family to have their own rooms in this compound. And it's the image that Jesus has. He says, there's always another room. We'll build another room. We'll add another room. I'll prepare a place for each of you. And if I prepare a place for you, that means I'm coming back to take you to be with me. Judy's place was ready on Sunday. And so Jesus came to take her home. Why? Jesus says, so that you can be with me, that we might be together forever. The words that, that Judy's pastor chose for her confirmation day, these words that I command you shall be on your heart. And... You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise. That these words are not just for ourselves, but they are for our children as well. That we have the privilege of teaching them, teaching them diligently. I had the privilege of... of uh, helping Judy in that process of teaching her children with two of you in confirmation class. Um, I won't say which one I had to talk to Judy more about for challenges in that teaching, but I'll let you do your own guess on that, um, right? But it is, it's a process, and it's a family thing, passing on the faith, um, teaching the faith, teaching to our children, um, to the third and now even fourth generation. Uh, these are the words of life. It's the best gift. It's the best legacy that we can pass on to our families. It's the heritage of faith. In Judy's confirmation verse has now, in a sense, been inherited by those of you who are her children. That you, too, might pass on that faith to your children. You see, we are Easter people. That means we have a God who has conquered death. Yes, he died in our place. He was put in the tomb, in the grave, but he did not stay there. He rose again. The victory belongs to him. And in baptism, that victory becomes ours as well. We share in that triumph. 
the fear and sting of death is taken away. Death will not have the last word. Jesus does. His word is life. His word is victory. He takes us to that promised land. Isaiah, two, three thousand years ago, wrote the words of our Old Testament reading. And he uses the, the picture of a feast for heaven. Judy loved holidays, having her family together, celebrating good food, good stuff to drink. That's what Isaiah says, the best of meats, venison or whatever that is, um, the finest of wines, the, the delicacies of the best things, our favorite foods, all gathered there, an unending feast. And then Isaiah says, and he swallows up death forever. There will be no more death in heaven. It's done. It's gone away. God will wipe away all of our tears. God has spoken. It is so. My friends, rejoice in the heritage of faith that is yours. In Judy, sharing that faith, passing it on. Let these words be in your heart as they were in hers. Trusting in Jesus, who says, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Lo, I am with you always, every day. Good days and bad, I am there. Just because it's a bad day doesn't mean I'm not there. If it's a bad day, I'm there even more for you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. It's God's promise. He called Judy, said, you are mine in the waters of baptism. He's done the same for each of us in our baptism, claimed us to be his sons and his daughters. Yes, for this life, but also for eternity. These words, the words of God, the words of life, on our hearts, in our minds, in our ears. The word of God, who gives us comfort, who gives us his promise. And so we don't grieve for Judy. We rejoice for her. We grieve for ourselves and for our loss. But that grief is tempered with the promise that it's not forever. That our God is with us. And one day too, the promised land, that unending feast awaits us all. I'd like to close with these words of the hymn writer who reminds us that that, that is where we are headed. That this earth is not the final destination. He says, I'm but a stranger here. Heaven is my home. Earth can be a desert drear, but heaven is my home. Da danger and sorrow stand round me on every hand. But heaven is my fatherland. Heaven is my home. What though the tempest rage, heaven is my home. Short is my pilgrimage, but heaven is my home. And time's wild wintry blast soon shall be overpassed, and I shall reach home at last. Heaven is my home. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to join with me in the, uh, the words of uh, promise and comfort and hope that are found in Psalm 23. They're printed on the back of your worship folder. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, 
for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We pray to the Lord our God and Father who raised Jesus from the dead. Please rise. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for your servant, Judy, that you called her to faith in the waters of baptism, that you blessed her with your gifts of word and sacrament, that you placed these things in her heart and in her mind. We thank you for the life that you gave to her, for the gift of family, for all of your blessings, dear Lord. And we give you thanks also this day that you have called her home. She enjoys the beauty, the sweet air, the unending banquet of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have knit all your chosen people together into one communion, into the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, give to the family of Judy and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and to find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, receive our thanks for Judy and for all the blessings you bestowed on her in this earthly life. And bring us at last to our heavenly home that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. And O oh God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection that he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says our Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. 
Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared in the face of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. I am the resurrection and the life, says our Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Now may God the Father, who created Judy, may God the Son, who by his blood redeemed her, and may God the Holy Spirit, who by holy baptism sanctified her to be his temple, keep these remains until the day of the resurrection of all flesh. We pray, Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life and the joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. This we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. May be seated. We join in our closing hymn. Yeah. invites everyone to join them for lunch in the fellowship hall. As we do that, uh, we pray for God's blessings upon the food that we will eat. Gracious Lord, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of, of every living being. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of food, of, of gathering together. 
Uh, we know, Lord, uh, Judy's love for, for holidays and celebrations and food and, and being together. And so, Lord, we pray that you would bless this time, uh, bless both of the food that we eat, but also uh, bless our time together as we share and remember, um, as we encourage um, and share uh, that love that you give to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise. Ha, 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 ha.